But as far as human origins goes, and this um, struggle is, is still going on today. There are certain um, anthropologists which are trying to do an objective scientific job of it, and then there are these cultural anthropologists. Uh, Jonathan Marks, I mentioned, is he's mentioned in this recent story about the discovery in, in South Africa, who are trying to basically spin it. And and yeah. we saw it in the Konstanki uh, 14 discovery that was uh, came out a, a year, a bit more ago, um, where they did some genetic sequencing on an ancient skeleton and discovered that even as far as 40,000 years ago, Europeans were pretty much what we are today and, and genetically homogenous over a vast area of what we would think of not just as Europe today, but, but out into the boundaries around Europe. And, um, and yet at the same time that they're writing these stories describing the, the bare facts like that, that you, could, you have to sort of read between the lines to put those kind of things together, uh, they're spinning a race-mixing, melting pot, <laughs> uh, you know, we got to mix it up because just like our ancestors did, you know, it's taking the facts, which is that we are, we Europeans are an amalgam of several other groups that were, in fact, pretty closely related to each other, even though they're identifiably separate distinctive genetically they and and one group con you know flooded into europe the aryans conquered uh europe and the middle eastern farmers moved into europe and and displaced the hundred gather gatherers that were already there and melded with them too all of three of these groups were all very closely related genetically to begin with and th the lesson i take away from that is even when you have very closely related groups that there can be racial animosity between them and conquest and warfare and so to import Africans into Europe, to import Asians into Europe who were 100,000 and, and 40,000 years removed from genetically, uh, that is just insanity. It's just a literal insanity of, of you've got to be crazy to think that that's going to work, that there isn't going to be even more difficult problems to, uh, to deal with because of that. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like um, societies have fallen in the past, uh, you know, great ones, lesser ones, what have you. But but when they enter into the multicultural uh, tract, either if they're encouraged by it or pushed into it, or if it's through, uh, you know, some kind of importing tons of slaves that are doing a lot of work or whatever, and then eventually they become citizens and things are, are turned around. And, and eventually the, that civilization, that society uh, seems just to to collapse, basically. Yeah, from what I my understanding of history, a uh, little bit that I've done, uh, am, amateur level history, is that's exactly it. The tendency toward empire, and the collapse then ultimately of the empire because it uh, is overwhelmed by diversity. The diversity is divisive, and in the end, the empire collapses because of that. Whatever the founding stock is, uh, it eventually becomes so diluted and loses control. And that's what happened in Rome. That's probably what happened in Babylon, Persia, all the uh, all the rest Egypt, of them as well. Maybe even too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, from what we know of the record, the tattered bits and rem pieces that seems to fit that understanding. Now, let me ask you a little bit more. We can switch over here a little bit and talk more about human human origins and that question a bit here. Um, and and just talk about the, the aspect that what we've been taught is that everything we're getting lately is is science right this is the this is proof it's irrefutable it shows that we are all the same um and and the very aspect that when you be begin to bring up differences there is this whole wall of 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 nonsense frankly that you come up against with you know links to to discovery and times magazine and national geographics and everything else that are ultimately proving that whatever you're talking about uh, you're absolutely, uh, you know, wrong. So as soon as you go into human origins, it really has become politicized. That if you're trying to show that there are some kind of differences between us, uh, you're immediately uh, shot down, right? Right. It's a struggle. It's a. It's part of the culture war, you could say, between whites and Jews. Basically, uh, the as I said earlier, it's it's white objectivity, science versus Jewish moralizing and narrative storytelling. And the Jews are on top now and have been for 100 years uh, since Boaz's day. And uh, that shift was from the physical anthropologists, scientists studying race and looking at the archaeological record back then, to today we have what's called cultural anthropology, which is all about narrative and telling stories and the equivalence uh, of, of various cultures and that there is no real biological race. And, 
And that's all mixed in with, um, I, I don't want to misrepresent it. It's not like the, the war is over. There's still a struggle going on. There are still white scientists. They don't think of themselves as racialists or as, as advocates for their people. They're just doing what it comes instinctively to them. They're, they're trying to empirically understand objectively what happened in the past? How, how did we get here? And so they're digging up bones and they're trying to figure it out as best they can, as accurately as they can. But they operate under a, a, a big handicap. They can't connect in any way their work to what was being done 100 years ago because that's all you know, uh, tainted now as being anti-Jewish and, and uh, racist. And so they come up with different words for what they're doing. They, instead of calling it race, they call it population genetics instead of calling it race science. Um, they uh, have changed the words. They literally use euphemisms. Instead of calling them Aryans, they call them Indo-Europeans. <laughs> uh, it's, and it's a, it's a tremendous handicap it's um it, in politics today they have this thing called dog whistling right and this is the idea yeah. that republican right-wing far-right politicians must speak in code to their white uh, voters their white base in order to make their promises that they're going to fulfill their racist desires uh, that's what the, the left calls dog whistling and they talk about it as if it's some indication of rotten um intent it's really a projection of their own technique their own speaking and code that they do but uh, the the main point is is that the the fact that the right has to do that to their voters and speak in code speak in whispers is a big disadvantage that you can't just speak plainly as the other the non-white groups can about their interests and that they when a when a non-white politician goes to office they are there to bring home the bacon for their com- people, yes, their constituency. Exactly. And it's out in the open. They, they make promises to their people that are explicit and they, and then they deliver or they try as hard as they can to deliver. Um, yeah. Look at the, I mean, there's more talk on the Republican side about, I'm going to, you know, we're going to v- win the Latino vote. You know, we're going to win the black vote. It's yes. like, well, what about the white people? There's still a majority in this case, in, in America. You know? Yes. <laughs> if it was about votes, they would be going for the white demographic. Yeah. Cause it's like, still, we don't even care about the, them anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, because it's not really about votes. It's more about the financial support and media support that you can get from, from the Jewish demographic. And that's why the Jews are so uh, important to politics. It's not because of their votes. It's because of their money and their control over media. And we we see it today with the American Empire. It's just the, the latest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think it's I think it's over for America. I I just don't see any hope for it. As a, I hope it's over over for America. It's become a, <laughs> right. a poisonous influence, and it's killing not just the American um, core, the founding stock of of America is or has already been displaced and removed from power mostly. Uh, but it's threatening now Europe, the the fatherland, the yes, motherland of, of uh, European peoples. Oh, it plagues it's me more go. than anything else. I just, it's, it's, it's horrible to, to think about this. I, it's just. Um... And that's the future for all of Europe. Now the Northwestern part of Europe has been up until recently genetically and, and indirectly culturally, because the culture springs from the genetics, genetically homogenous, uh, remarkably homogenous. Yeah. Uh, going back 40,000 years to this uh, Konstanky uh, 14 sample that they found. And the Cro-Magnon man uh, is a, a, another example of this that lived from about 45,000 years ago to about 25,000 years ago. Samples that are uh, remarkably homogenous have been found from one tip of modern day Europe to the other. And these people were pretty much all the same. And they were ultimately replaced by these other combinations, the uh, hunter-gatherers and the Aryans and the Middle Eastern farmers. The, the three main components of modern European man. But the thing that you won't read in most accounts of this, and certainly won't read it in Wikipedia, is that those three main components were all just basically descendants of uh, one common ancestor, the, the, which what we call Cro-Magnon man. Has, mm. And it, there's a new euphemism for Cro-Magnon now that, that uh, is part of this. You know, it's sort of like how um, – Blacks, African Americans today, you know, they, they used to be called Negroes and then they were called uh, blacks and now th- then they were called African Americans. And, you know, there's this uh, politically correct shift in language oh, on, sure. on that yeah. side. Well, it's same in science. They, there's uh, this, you know, once if, if a word becomes too useful to white people, it's got to go. 
<laughs> <laughs> it's we're not allowed to keep using it. Yeah. You know, it's uh, and that changing <laughs> of words is um, it's an indication of the Jewish the power that the, the media the Jewish media has uh, and Jewish academia uh, over our brains and and that they can uh, force us to to use different words. And I liked your last guest uh, Daniel, your recent guest Daniel. That he was talking about metapolitics and yeah. And part of that is I haven't read his book, but I can understand what what he's getting at is. Language is a very important part of, of, uh, of uh, asserting our own identity and our own interests is to think for ourselves and in our own terms. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, think about it, too. I mean, we, we've already lost so many, many tribes in, not, I mean, not only Europe, all over the world, but, you know, we're, we're talking about Europe here primarily. And, you know, you can look at, at an old Roman map with, with the different namings and just see a, a multitude of, the, of these different peoples that have slowly been absorbed into others and, and you know, conquered and, and taken over and absorbed into a greater empire, et cetera, et cetera. And, and uh, you know, although the differences might have been, you know, very slight between some of them, some of them had distinct different languages, dis distinct different cultural traits and, and uh, you know, the, the type of, of patterns that they had on their uh, you know, shields and garments and, you know, just these, a wonderful diversity, basically. And yeah. it's just been one long road towards eradicating differences, towards centralization, uh, towards greater and greater empires. And many of these groups have just completely been, uh, you know, destroyed, uh, annihilated by, by if it was the Roman Empire, for example, or, or other tribes. And that alone, I mean, it, it's like should be a warning to us today of saying that, Wait a minute! Isn't it time to preserve the human biodiversity that we have now? That we can we can't change the past, but at least let's not continue on that path and eradicate them even more. But that's what's happening, and, and, and it plagues me like nothing else. You know. 